Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlaub, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, my guest is Paul Brennan. And our program is about the history of hope. Paul has traveled across the sea from Ohio to India and New Guinea, finally settling in Hawaii with his wife, Dottie, about 40 years ago. Paul is a student of history. He's the president of the Kailua Historical Society and the lead author of the award-winning book titled Kailua. He's a retired pastor and a master woodcrafter. Paul and Dottie live in Manawili, where they have taken in 20 foster children over the years. In these times of stress and strain, many people feel hopeless and they worry about the future. I've, I've heard it from lots of folks. Paul has told me that the history of hope in Hawaii provides contemporary value for us. I've asked Paul to share this history of hope with us. Paul, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank How you. are you? My pleasure. Now, uh, please, you know, what is your definition of hope? I mean, what are your concerns about the current COVID-19 pandemic, the economic problems we're having, political problems in Hawaii, and, and, and is there hope? Tell, please, please tell us, what is the history of hope and, and what, you know, what are your feelings, please? The concept of hope is not foreign to me. I have... Uh been aware of my need to rely on it again and again. Uh, my wife and I just celebrated 60 years of marriage. And if I took the definition of hope to be a wish, well, then those wedding vows would not have meant very much. Uh, hope is much more than a wish. And since I have been in Hawaii, living in Monowili, and being able to interview many people myself about Tai Lua's history, I have learned so much about the true meaning of hope. Uh, to me, it's a feeling of trust. It's a confidence that there is reason to believe that good expectations can take place. I, uh, I have thought about the, the environment of Monowili. Um, Monowili has good soil. Monowili has ample rainfall. Monowili has a good combination of light and dark. And for me, hope is like a garden where different energies converge to create new life. It's that confidence in positive outcomes, um, all the while realizing that there will be challenges that will be coming along. And so hope has a very noble kind of respect for me. And it's very personal. And it also relates a great deal to my vocation. Because when I moved to this place, I had no job. But I came here on a hope and a prayer. And I believe that that was rewarded. And I would do it all over again. Uh, I have just been so fortunate in being able to find not only work and to be compensated for my work, but uh, especially to be rewarded by being in contact with people of hope. And I would be happy to share with you what some of that has been. Please, please. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear what your relationships have given you and, and how that 
provides hope under under these strange circumstances and for the future. Please. Um, although I never had the privilege of interviewing her, I feel like I know her on a personal basis. And that is this person who was born a century before me, 1838. We call her Queen Liliuo Kalani. And I have spent many hours in an area where I know she visited and she had some very uh, significant experiences there. Um, at the Queen's Retreat, as we call it, uh, there is a carriageway and there is a, a bath and there is the home of the Boyd family still standing. And often I have gone there as I have thought about how in the 1870s, she began coming to this area. It was a re retreat for her. And she obviously loved to come there. And sometimes it was incorporated into round the island tours. Uh, in 1881, for example, we know that she came and she had this unfortunate experience of an accident where she tumbled out of the carriage and she said she thought she was going to die. <laughs> and there were four men who put her on a stretcher and they carried her on the old government road over to Waimanalo. And Mr. Cummins, who was the manager of the Waimanalo Sugar Company, fired up their steamer and they took this injured person, at that time, the princess, and they took her around to Honolulu Harbor where she was able to find uh, six weeks of very intensive rest in Washington place. And she was able to be given all of the healing processes. Fortunately, she broke no bones. Fortunately, it was mostly uh, just bruises to her body. But I have thought about that in the context of her life and how for many of those experiences, she had to retreat. She had to find hope. She had to be renewed. And likewise for me, I have gone to that same place because I have felt the mana'o of that area, the mana, which was so strong. And uh, I have just been the recipient of so much renewal of hopefulness. This uh, business of being able to find your balance of being able to find creativity has been with me all of my life. And so Queen Lilio Kalani, uh, in her many visits to Monawili, have encouraged me to walk back to some of those same places and to try to feel the same renewal of energy. I think, for example, of her best known music, uh, that popular love song, which she was inspired to write there. It's all about renewal. It's all about the convergence of the expectations that we think we human beings can find. And so I have benefited from that, even though I never saw her in person, even though she was a century before me. But uh, 
One of the things that I have taken from that area, thanks to the permission from the owners of the property, I took the tree that was planted at the end of the carriageway because the Weinberg Foundation had no desire to use it. And I milled it and I have made benches and other furniture from some of that wood, which to me seems penetrated with the hopefulness of that area. And once the termite holes have been able to be fixed and once we are able to expose the beautiful grain, then you can see the strength and the vitality that that area has to provide. So the, the spirit of our queen continues is what I hear you saying and it, it lives on and it, it, and it gives you personally uh, ability to revitalize. Uh, that's what I hear you saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And then <clears throat> subsequent to that awareness, I, I have been in contact with people who lived also in this area before us. Uh, one of them was Joseph Kanye Peel. And uh, the Kanye Peel family have been very prominent in Monawili, they had a kuleana, and we began seeing their name appearing on some of the old maps just after the great Mihaly, uh, John Kaniapil, and his son, Joe Kaniapil, one of 16 children, became a very good friend of mine. And I was fortunate to be able to be in his presence and learn about the journey of that family. They, they had four different residential areas and they were constantly being moved around from one to another. But there was always this hopefulness this confidence that there would be enough, all the needs of their family could be met. And so Joe became one of my very good friends. Joe told me about what it was like to grow up in Monawili. There was a still, I guess, behind their house and the Okolihau was being made, but Joe focused on his horse, he focused on his schooling, he focused on his family, he focused on what was happening and he was among many who had to adjust to the fact that uh, Kailua was no longer be, going to be centered in Monawili. But about, nine, about 1930, the great shift took place from Monawili, an agricultural, sedentary kind of ex existential life shifted to what we know today as the cosmopolitan center of Kailua. And so three miles down the road, Joe had to get on his horse and continue his schooling in a very different place. And he had to find new friends, <clears throat> but always there was the confidence things are going to work out. There would be positive outcomes. So I, I hear, you know, there's a spirit of our queen and your friend, Joe, it, it says focus. And, and now we have a, a, a question from a viewer, uh, how can we learn from our past to find hope during these troubling times? Well, I think we can learn from their past 
by understanding what their past consisted of. Uh, they had skills. There was no question about that. Uh, Joe and the other Kaniapios were not coming in like immigrants, uh, but Joe had many skills. He did his work working for the city and the county, but uh, he also, first of all, had many friends. And ah. so this community around him. And even when the war broke out, where did Joe go when he was in Queens Hospital? He was a relatively young man at that time. He came home from the hospital to find that the military had taken over their home. And so the place that he went was to Tao Hao, Lanikai, where he had friends. And they helped each other in that newly formed relationship. Uh, that community was sufficient for him all the while that the war was going on. So, so I, I hear spirit, focus on your strengths, and friendships are, are kind of important things about hope and, and maintaining hope and think about those things. Is that, is that right? Is that what, I, do I have it right? That's exactly right. And I have found that to be so true in my own life. And, and do you have, I mean, we, we have about 10 minutes left. Do you have any other experiences with people you've spoken with and, and that, that you can share with us similar to, to your, your, those you've already <laughs> done? Sure. Well, uh, one of the immigrants who came here was not born in Hawaii. His name is Reverend Chimpe Goto. And Reverend Goto was the first pastor of what today we call the Kailua United Methodist Church. Reverend Goto was pastoring to basically a Japanese language speaking and a Japanese community of immigrants in Kailua. And the little white church, as it was called, was where Salvation Army is located today. On the day of the bombing, Reverend Goto was taken from the pulpit incarcerated on Sand Island and held there incommunicado until Christmas Day. And then the military believed that he was sufficiently trustworthy and they allowed him to go home. He had to find his own way to Kaneohe where Ben Parker School and his family were. He walked in and his children have told me about that Christmas being unlike any that they had ever had before. He was still wearing the same suit that he was wearing on the 7th of December, 1941, when the military took him. He turned out to be a very loyal friend to the government. He was calm in his own personal uh, demeanor. Uh, he had these many contacts. He could share his sense of confidence that all would work out. And when the war finally was over, uh, he was honored for the work that he had done in liaising with his people. That's just another example. And, and, and that one adds to what you've already said. I mean, don't let circumstances control you and maintain your hope, maintain your confidence, maintain 
your your feeling of uh, the spirit of hope that things, if you proceed according to your beliefs, you'll be fine. And for me, it's also been strengthened by the biblical kind of concept of hope. It's this confident expectation of what God has promised and its strength is in God's faithfulness. We can believe that once we have done all that humanly is possible for us to do, things will work out and we will be able to find at the end of the day, at the end of the night, at the end of the pandemic, uh, the kind of resurrection that we all are yearning for. We call it normalcy. I think it gives us a new understanding of what normalcy really means. Do you, we have a few minutes left. Do you have any other examples of uh, uh, these type of local stories to share with us? Oh, absolutely. I've interviewed a um, hundred of these people and uh, Mary Wong Takahashi quickly comes to mind. Mary Wong was born in Monowilly. Uh, she worked in her grandmother's store which is where the Trinity Presbyterian Church is located, just at the Pali light going into Kailua. And Mary Wong uh, grew up there realizing that there was the rice mill just across the street. Her uncle ran that rice mill and she helped her grandma, although her formal education consisted of only about two years in school adjacent to where their little store was. But um, Mary Wong married a Japanese man, Koshiro, and that Chinese-Japanese liaison became strong and they had their family. And even though they could not afford to buy the land from Harold Castle, when he told them, either you buy it or you move, well, they had to move. But Mary and her family were able in that transition as they went to Kaneohe to find a new place. They were able to keep these relationships with friends. They were able to continue to create ways in which they could support each other. And I will always be blessed to remember people just like Joe and Chimpe and Mary and the dozens of others who have contributed to my experience while I have been here. So you're, you're really talking about people. Uh, you're really saying that we have hope because we are people and we should look for that relate those relationships, those friendships, uh, that spirit to share and be friends, keep our friends close and talk to, to each other, uh, spread the spirit. In, you know, what, what in, in the two or three minutes we have left, if, if somebody is feeling down and feeling hopeless and feeling there's no hope, what, what words would you give them? I mean, what, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them now? Be truthful about the realities of where you are. Be honest about what your needs are and don't ignore any of them. 
and keep that honesty in your relationships with other people. If you have needs, express them. Uh, spend time in reflection. Be creative with your hands. Build new expressions about your vitality. And don't check your pulse all the time about why you are doing what you are doing. Um, be confident that your therapy, your healing, your hopefulness is going to be able to bridge whatever troubled waters there might be underneath us. You know that, sorry, go, go ahead. In my lifetime, I've been privileged to meet Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr. I never knew them very well, but now I understand after their lives have been portrayed before us. I never met Winston Churchill, but the spirit of their hopefulness, the spirit of their strong commitment to truth and confidence is something that I have been able to receive in great amount. And so I am grateful to be able to share it. Uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that. And it made me think as uh, you were talking, especially about Mauna Willie, uh, during these, this period of time, during the pandemic, uh, I, I, as you know, I've been walking around Mauna Willie and uh, actually what has happened is the pandemic has brought out the people of Mauna Willie and uh, everybody is where we never saw each other before never talked to each other before. Uh, actually, there's a lot more friendship and people are waving and walking and talking. And it, it's kind of interesting, but you kind of made me think now that Mauna Willi is, is kind of a, a connection point and for, for my own experience. And uh, it, 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 it is hopeful. It is hopeful. So. Uh, I, I appreciate, Paul, your, your insight into that. Well, thank you. And uh, I also am happy that I know you as a new friend too. I think that uh, we are enlarging the net of strength, of friendship. There is more compassion towards each other. There is more of this very important uh, interaction that can be taking place. And sometimes it takes a crisis like this to make it happen. Well, Paul, uh, I wanna thank you for being my guest today uh, on, on, the, on the History of Hope. Paul Brennan uh, has, shared his personal experiences and his insight into hope. And I wanna wish everyone a hopeful day and aloha.